Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm the Gamer's Digester, and trust me, I've heard you guys. Obviously, there's something going on with the ASUS ROG Allies joysticks. Now, I've compiled a list here of, of things that I've heard from you guys, the community, what I've seen online via iFixit, Reddit, stuff like that. And I'm going to go over the most common things, fixes. For right now, There, it's very limited what we can do. Um, and, and I'll get into that a little bit later into the video. But um, And potential replacements. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll, I'll link that in the description. Um, but someone has found replacement joysticks for these. But there is a catch. So... Let me start off here by saying thank you guys. We hit a thousand subscribers a few days ago. This has been an incredible journey. If you guys like today's video, I encourage you guys to subscribe. I post almost daily, um, just tips and tricks kind of things, M mostly my opinion on the on the handheld space and, and this device currently. But with all that said, let's get right into it. So first things first for me, on day one, the first thing I noticed was the dead zone, right? I don't know if that's coming through great on the camera, but that was my first thing was, is this just something in the settings? I didn't exactly know what was going on there. And this is this is probably the most common, so I'll, I'll touch on this first. One of the first fixes is going here, hitting configuration. You can do this for both. Go to the left stick. Now the dead zone there, the top, so like the inner part of the dead zone, will already be set to zero. So that's great, but it, it's not entirely great because it's not perfect at that zero. So the one fix I found is setting this bottom slider to around 90 or 80%. So that means you don't have to push the joystick so far for it to recognize that it's at 100%. Uh, make sure that when you do that, you do that for the left and the right stick as well. And then you can do that to the desktop mode too. And it'll look the exact same. I have the desktop mode here set to 75% just so that it, it activates a lot quicker. So this is how it looks even with those turned off or with, with the sliders adjusted there. And for me, this is a lot better than it was before, um, but it's still noticeable. Even with this fix, it is still noticeable. So what exactly is a fix? Now I'll show you guys uh, really quickly here. I've been playing Fallout 4. I've never actually played the game before, but look at that. That is a lot better. I mean like way better, you guys. Not only does this game look and play great, that is very acceptable. So what's the problem here? Is it just something on the Windows side? Um, and honestly, I think that is the case. You guys will have to let me know what you guys, what your theories are, what you think it is. But what I think it is, is I think that this is something on Windows end. Windows wasn't made for this. There's a handheld mode in the works. Uh, there's not really a timeline on that that I'm aware of. But with the popularity of these handheld Windows devices there's obviously been a push for one windows is excellent on these what windows does is excellent i mean but windows doesn't run exactly how it would on a desktop without having a mouse there's a couple things that you have to do without having a keyboard mostly these buttons back here you use as functions and stuff but it's not perfect but hopefully when that handheld mode comes out all these weird little things are ironed out because as far as I'm aware, Fallout 4, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare actually does have a, a slight uh, input delay issue. It's it's kind of hard. Some of these competitive first-person shooter games are a little bit harder, but that's a great segue into what I think is the bigger confusion. It seems to be like a case-by-case -case basis. So I've played Modern Warfare here on the channel, and it was honestly laughable. Like, the game looked great. It played great. It felt great and I still play it like almost every day. I'm just, I'm I'm not horrible at Modern Warfare. I'll just say that. I've been playing it since I was like 10 years old. I, I am absolutely not horrible at the at Call of Duty games by any means. And coming onto here, oh yeah, I, I feel like I'm playing with my feet. Like you're you're trying to hit things sometimes. You have to really slow down like it's your first time uh, on a new game, you know, so... 
it definitely takes some getting used to. So if you're looking to get this device with the, with the idea that you're going to just be able to hop right in, if you're looking to play games like Call of Duty or Battlefield or, or Destiny, the input delay for each one of those three I just said is noticeable enough that it, that it feels wrong. But then, like I just showed here on uh, Fallout, incredibly fast. Sorry, that light's in the way there. Super fast. Like, there, I, you can slow that down there. It really just depends on the game. And I don't know what entirely... I mean, Fallout 4 is like... Uh, that game's from like 2015? Somewhere around there? I mean, that's, a, that's an older game. I don't understand why that game in particular... And some of the other ones I've played that are more like single player type games, Street Fighter VI does an excellent job as well. There's almost no input delay that I feel. But then there's other games that would definitely benefit from having a better input delay. What is, I? that's all just speculation, at least on my end. I'm, I'm not entirely going to be taking this device apart to see exactly what's going on with that game per game because it could just be something that could get patched out. Um, which is probably the next thing I was going to talk about here is this could just be something that Asus needs to work on. I, we're about two, two and a half weeks in here to the release of the device. And it definitely has been something that you guys have been talking about a lot. Uh, people have been, in fact, returning their devices. I know the joysticks just in general have kind of been a touchy subject. Um, th how they feel versus the Steam Deck. I'll uh, show you guys here. Just the actual joysticks, that one sits super high, like out off the device. And then you go to this, sunken in. Like the actual joystick part is sunken into the device where this sits up and out. So I prefer this. Oh wow, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't. I just, I like the Steam Deck so much more. Like, like so much more. I'm not even, I could go on a rant about that. But the, these work for what they are. I love the, the, the RGB is great, okay? I, I won't lie. I'm kind of a sucker for it. But they're just not the greatest joysticks. So they're kind of loose, you know? What, what one YouTuber has done, um, I, I don't know his name off the top of my head. I will link the video in the description. Trust me. So if you guys want to check that out, absolutely go for it. It seems like this is kind of something that he does quite a bit, quite a bit, but I'll definitely link that in the description. Go check that out. But what he did is he replaced these joysticks and it was incredibly simple. You just take the back plate off, uh, just a, just one screwdriver pretty much, um, remove it. And then you can swap these out for, I believe they're called Hall Effect joysticks, joysticks, joy, not joy cons, joysticks. Um, and pretty much they use magnets, so they don't ever really uh, have stick drift. I mean, you have to calibrate them when you put them in, but they don't have stick drift like something like an older Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller would get if you're familiar with something like that. Because that, that's kind of a big thing. Uh, the, this is your main way to control the device. How that will hold up two years into its life cycle or lifespan Um you're probably gonna to wanna to replace a joint stick. So it's great to see that the, it's actually something that is fairly simple to do. Um, the catch, this joystick lines up almost perfectly with a magnet on this guy here. I believe these are, are Hall Effect triggers. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure these are Hall Effect triggers. The magnet on this lines up with the Hall Effect magnet when you would replace that and there's interference. So when you pull the trigger down, the joystick moves. Now that sounds crazy. You'll have to go check out his video, but it's not the case for this. So it, it really just depends on the game that you're going to play. For me, that's not a problem. Because if I'm playing something like Call of Duty, um, that's not a problem. The only problem would be something like Forza or a racing game. You, you need that sensitivity. And the fix for having that Hall Effect joystick would be turning down the dead zone so that when you're pulling the trigger, it doesn't recognize the slight movement that it's causing on the joystick. And for like a racing game or something like that, this is how you steer. <laughs> so you, you kind of need that. You need every bit of sensitivity you can get. So for me, it is not a perfect fix. And I'm not gonna consider it a perfect fix by any means. I don't entirely know. This was a very recent video, so there's definitely stuff he said he's gonna be looking into to try and fix this issue. 
but just know that it is replaceable and it is fairly easy. Now, this kind of segues into my opinion on just this device and the Steam Deck. Now, sorry, I keep having to turn around to pull it out. It kind of makes me miss the trackpads. I know if you're familiar with my channel, I kind of dissed on them a bit, but that's because the operating system for this, it's not Windows, right? So you're almost never using this to navigate. But now that we are using Windows, I, I really wish I had the trackpad because when I'm in a game, there is no issue, right? There, it, Depending on the game, depending on the game, there is almost no issue. So when I'm navigating Windows, at, though, I wouldn't have mind, minded like a trackpad. I have no idea where they would have fit that in. Um, but personally, I prefer something the size of the Steam Deck. It fits my hands better. So that's just me personally. I, I don't entirely enjoy the sacrifices that this device had to make to be this size. When for me, it's not even that big of a, of a difference. I know this has a case on, which is kind of throwing the size difference off a little bit, but <sighs> I digress. It is what it is, I guess. So until then, I know that wasn't the greatest fix list, but that's kind of just where the Asus is. That That's where we are in general. As, a, as someone who's purchased this device, um, as sad as it sounds, there really is not a lot that we can do right now. There's no kits. There's not really anything that we can do to fix. If your D-pad breaks, it, same with the accessories. There's almost no accessories. I've made tons of videos about that. The support from Asus is almost not, nothing right now. Um, if you're considering buying this device, I'd kind of urge you to hold off, um, at least for maybe the next couple months, maybe a month or two. Um, fantastic device. I've absolutely loved every minute playing it. These minor hiccups for me are just growing pains and it's something that I can work through. Um, I, I almost always get these devices on day one. I got Series X pre-order day one. Uh, like Almost everything I get, I try and get pre-ordered. I pre-ordered this day one. And I, and I fully expected when I got this device, I knew that there was gonna be issues. I knew it, we all knew it. it it's, it's just something that, it, it's, it's like any game, you know? If you pre-order Starfield or whatever, if you're expecting this clean, polished device or, or game straight out of the box, I think we're kind of past the point of no return and I would kind of say you're, you're insane. There's been so many games, so many devices that have came out in the past five or six years that have just been atrocious on launch and they use us as guinea pigs. However you feel about that, I, 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 I can relate, I totally get it. That's just the way things are right now. And that's not anything that we as consumers have a direct immediate change on because we keep buying everything. I keep buying shit. I know you guys are buying stuff. It's not like there's anything that we can do to make them understand we're just gonna have to keep being guinea pigs, which is, it, it is what it is, um, as I as I just said before. And I'm, you know what, I might even make a whole video about this in the future. I it it, it is what it is. So um, with that, I know that this was kind of not the maybe the best fix video because, like I said, there's really not much you guys can do other than maybe returning the device. And that and this is I what I believe to be a perfect 100% fully functional device, no defects. Silicon lottery aside, whatever, I think I may have gotten one of the better ones compared to some other videos. My frame rate's been a little bit higher, but that's just my device. So I am not returning this. No way, Jose, this has been fantastic. And it still has these issues. So it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, if you know something's faulty, then return it. But I don't think that returning it just for this little joystick issue, this seems to be very, very similar across the board for everyone. So it, it is what it is. If you guys are feeling that latency, we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, with that, I love you guys. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you did, you guys are fantastic. Um, you know what? I actually might make a video tonight talking about that uh, subject I just brought up because I'm kind of full of heat right now and I feel like I could really make a good one. But uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe. Um, I appreciate y'all. Uh, have a good day.